you. He said, let not your heart be troubled, neither let it be afraid. When people don't have peace that comes from God, their heart will be troubled and they will walk in fear. And it's, it's the only way to remedy that is put your trust back in God. He's got to become bigger than what's troubling you. He's got to become bigger than what's fearing you. Tylen's here somewhere, and I'm not trying to pick on him, but I've been trying to get him to uh, shoot a few little pistols and rifles. And, so I'd get on, you, you can do anything on YouTube. Ten-year-old kid shooting a 270. They're on there. Show a girl, just wiring it out. I said, nine-year-old boy shooting nine millimeter. There he was, he's running through the course, just wearing it out. I said, so see there, people your age are doing this. I'm trying to relieve his fears because he's got this picture that's going to kick back and knock me down and all this other stuff. And you got to get past your fear. Fear is something that is taught. Fear, is, fear many times is something that's not even real. And when you get past it, you're like, you know how you, you I got to get a shot tomorrow. Oh, man. And then you're like, well, that wasn't so bad at all. I sat here and I didn't get any sleep last night worrying about this shot. And, well, that was a joke. It's fear. And fear will rob you in many areas of your life until you see reality. And God wants us to see reality in the fact that he not only died for your sins upon Calvary's cross, but he died for you to have peace. And he said, I don't want your heart to be troubled. I don't want you to live in fear. I want you to walk in your God-given authority and rise up and take your heavenly position in heavenly high places seated with Christ Jesus. I want you to go forward with confidence and have peace. Amen. That's what he wants for you. It's yours. Amen. You ever been to Eden? I remember way back. said, you don't want that? I'll take it for you. Because I done ate mine and I'm still hungry. And you know, there's nothing up there. You ain't going to eat that? Let me tell you something about myself. I save the best stuff for last. And, and you know, I've had people say, oh, you don't want that? And take it? And I'm like, I'm saving that for last. <laughs> you know, I, I, I start picking it off what, what I like the least, you know. Because I'm going to quit on a good note. I want my taste buds happy. You know what I'm talking about? God wants our spiritual taste buds happy. And he's given you everything necessary for life and godliness. And he said, I want you to walk in peace. I'm going to read one more. I said that before, didn't I? <laughs> Philippians 4. Peace is a, a, a guard. You know, if you were in an unsafe neighborhood, I mean, you, you see some houses that have bars over the doors and, and over the windows, and you're thinking, why? Wow. And, and they, they go through a lot of trouble to bolt these in so that people can't knock the windows in and come in. There's neighborhoods like that. But if you had armed guards sitting out there, well trained, you know, they're lit up and, and they're not out there sleeping and they're doing their thing and, and they're like, I can assure you, Mr. Smith, when you lay down, you can sleep in peace. Because we're out here and there's nobody coming in here on you. That, that, that's how God's peace will do you. Many people after years <coughs> and years of no peace, it just works on them and it wears on them. And they have breakdowns. People have breakdowns from this because they've not functioned and operated in the peace God wants them to have. Another promise in the Word, Philippians 4, verse 7. And the peace of God. You see that? And the peace of God, which passes all understanding. What? We're trying to understand it. That's what he's saying. This passes all knowledge. This passes all understanding. I just want you to function in it. I just want you to operate in it. I've shared this before. I can't tell you exactly how a microwave works, but I put stuff in there all the time, and I hit the minutes and go. 
And, and when I open the door, guess what? It has done what I planned on it doing. How's that thing work? I, I really can't tell you, but it works. Quit trying to understand everything about God. Just accept what he offers you and walk in it. And the peace of God, which passes all understanding, shall keep, shall guard, shall protect, what? Your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. This peace is like this armed guard that sits outside the door to your mind. And he says, I got you covered. I'm going to keep you from what the enemy wants to do because you've allowed God's peace to come in. And as a result of that, this is going to keep you. God's peace will keep you. And you don't have to worry. God cannot fail, church. He cannot fail. He cannot lie. And when he says we can have something, that's what you can count on. Amen. So maybe this is a reminder. Maybe this is just to uh, confirm or uh, encourage. Sometimes we just got to regroup. Let me take a look at that again and give it one more try. But there's things going on that are stealing our peace. And when we we get full of proper knowledge, when we get full of the right stuff, the stuff has got to go. It's got to go. I would encourage you today to grab a hold of that's mine. Kids learn this real young when they break out the toys. I mean, they'll tell you, quick, that's mine. No. And we, there's some spiritual things we're going to have to get that way with. That's mine. And we're going to have to take it back. Amen. The thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. We know that. Jesus said, I come to give life and that you have it more money. What are you going to have? I'm going to have life. How come? Because Jesus is the stronger of the two. Are you with me? <coughs> y'all would this morning let's stand and touch on the grave join hands across these aisles we're going to have prayer because I'm thoroughly convinced God wants everybody in here to have peace to have peace peace like a river I want peace. And you say, I want peace this morning? I want peace. Amen. You come to the right place. Let's pray. Dear precious Heavenly Father, we come before you right now in the name of Jesus. The name that is above every name. The name that salvation is found in, Lord. We look to you and we thank you for what you've done for us through that name. And Lord, right now we just recognize the truth that's found in your word that says God's peace belongs to us. And I'm praying right now, Lord, that you would feel each and every one as we reach out to you by faith, as we trust your word to be true, and we trust our relationship with you to be sufficient. Lord God, I ask that you would empower, I ask that you would strengthen, and I ask that you would fill each one of us with your precious peace. Not like the world gives, but the kind you give. And I rebuke the lies of the enemy. I rebuke the attacks from hell. And I say, take your hands off this church family. We're blood-bought, born-again believers. Our name's recorded in the Lamb's Book of Life. And we will walk in the peace of God. And Lord, I pray that you would just continue to strengthen us, to encourage us, to help us when the enemy starts to see your bigger, to see your stronger, and to put our trust in you. And I thank you, Lord, for what you've given us here today. And Lord, I know these that are with me here feel the same way. And we just look to you and ask all these things in Jesus' name. And the church said, Amen. Hook somebody's neck, tell me, Lord.
love you. <laughs> Did you know that? <laughs> We had a fish fry in Blanville yesterday. I should have told you about it. Well, I seen it on uh, Facebook or something. But it was late. I figured it's not over. Okay. It, well, I said it last night. It started to die. Yeah, it's all good. Last night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 